And so it's nothing wrong with wearing the mask to cover your natural face and to, and to wash your hands and to be uh, at, a, at a place of, of learning how to make sure that you are keeping your personal hygiene. All these things should be natural anyhow. But we want you to understand that as the church, we still have to minister to people. We still have, we still have to carry out the Great Commission. Second Corinthians chapter 3, begin reading at verse number 13. When you have that, would you stand and we will read down to verse number 18. Amen. And let us, for the sake of time, begin reading. And in the King James Version, verse number 13, ready, read. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remains the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord." Amen. We're going to use as a subject title today, The Church Unmask. Everybody say out loud with me. Say The Church, the church. Unmasked. 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 Now I know we're looking at some things here uh, concerning the difference in Old Covenant and New Covenant. But I want to help you to understand how this really relates to us on today. This shows me today that when we are dealing with a pandemic, a pandemic that has really devastated people around the world because of their lack of understanding of what it is and, and why it's happening. And some people want to blame God. Some people want to blame uh, leaders. People are putting the blame here and putting the blame there and wanting to know why is it happening like this and why would he have to go through the things we're going through with all the social distancing and all of the uh, people uh, being quarantined and, and staying at home and not doing things the way we used to do things. Yeah. What, what's going on? Well, I want you to understand something about this that Social distancing was not man's idea. God had an idea about social distancing long before now. And I want you to be, <laughs> be reminded of Genesis chapter number 11. When the people of the world, after they had gotten off the ark and some years went by and they began to build cities, they began to build civilizations. And, and when they began to, to realize the uh, ability that mankind had, they began to worship idols. And they were building things. They, they were very innovative in, in, in all that they could do and building their technology that they had at that time. And so they were coming up with all kinds of ideas and everything that mankind could think of, that's what they were doing. It says that they came together to build a city. And while they were building a city, 
they built also or started to build a tower that they could build all the way to heaven. They said, let us come together and let us build a city and let us build a tower to heaven. Why would they do a thing like that? Because again, they were doing everything that was in their heart to do and in their, and in their wicked minds rebelling against God. And so God himself said that he would come down and look at the city that they had built. And then he began to look at the tower and he says, let us go down and confound the languages because whenever mankind comes together, mankind can do anything that he can think of, anything in his imagination. And they will begin to realize how much ability that they really have. So let us go down and confound the languages before man destroys himself with all of this knowledge. So that's what God did. He confounded the languages and this was the first social distancing that took place because the people began to spread out Amen. to all of these different parts and all of these different parts of the world and, and the nations of the world began to form. Why? Amen. Because their languages were confounded. Amen. They couldn't understand each other and since they couldn't understand each other, they could not come together to do whatever they would do. So God showed us that whenever man comes together, he will begin to do all the wickedness that's in his heart. Yes. And he would do whatever he could imagine to do. And if mankind would do everything that he can imagine doing, he's eventually going to destroy himself. God had to separate the people yes. to keep them yes. from destroying Amen. themselves. So this was what we consider the first social distancing because God was trying to protect the people. <laughs> Amen. I know a lot of folks say, well, I never thought of it like that. But, but, but you got to understand that sometimes separation is necessary. Amen. Because God saw that they had turned their hearts away from him. And they began to turn to their own imaginations and do everything that they could feel like they were big enough to do. And God himself was forgotten about. And he wanted to draw the people's attention back to himself and get them to see, look, I'm God and you're not. Amen. So the Tower of Babel ceased to be built because of God coming down to confound the languages. Now some time went on, of course, and God would bring his law into the world through Moses. And he would use Moses to go up on Mount Sinai to receive his law and his commandments. To show mankind what you are supposed to do. How you're supposed to live. What is it that God wants. And to also help them to realize that with this law. You will come to the place of recognizing that you are not innocent. Because you are breaking my laws. And so I'm going to put them down where they are written. And you can see for yourself. Yes. That you are sinners and your heart is far from me. Yes. And so whenever Moses would bring the commandments to the people. We see here in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 where it begins to show us what was going on back at that time. And that is that Moses would come with the law of God in his hands. But whenever the people looked upon Moses, they would see the glow of the glory of God on Moses' face. And they could not stand to look upon him because it was God's holiness. It was God's glory. Yeah. It was the presence of the Lord. And yeah. with the wickedness that was in the hearts of the people, they began to turn away and they said, we don't want to look upon you. We can't stand to look upon you. Yeah. And so they, they needed Moses to put a veil over his face yeah. so that they would be able to listen to him giving the message of God. So he had to put a veil over his face to cover yeah. the glory. My God. Well, even now, the scripture says, Israel, as a people, still have a veil over their faces today. Or the, the word of God is still, in a sense, hidden because they turn away from or they have rejected, as a people, Jesus Christ. Yeah. And when you reject Jesus Christ, the veil is still there. Amen. And when, you, when the veil is there, you are blind to see what it is that God really wants you to see. Amen. What God has in store for you. What, what God's purpose is all about. Yes. And so that the people who would know the Lord. They reject him. 
and the veil is still there. Amen. But there are those who have come to know Christ. And when you have come to know Christ and you are born again of his spirit, the glow comes back. I don't know if anybody ever told you anything like, you look different after you got saved. You, there's something different about you after you got born again. After you come to know the Lord, there's a glow about you. Sometimes yeah. people say that to women when, they, when they're pregnant. They'll say, there's a glow about you. I can tell yeah. there's a change. Yeah. But when you get born again, you are a new creature in Christ. Amen. You have come into the Holy of Holies. You've come to the place to where God would now open his revelations up to you and there is no veil over his word for those who love the Lord and if you love the Lord he says that you can come into my presence you can you can come into the holy place and the veil has been removed the veil has been torn in twain that you can now come and enter into the throne of God and you can approach him as an individual just like Moses was able to approach him, you will be able to approach the Lord and have a personal relationship with him. And then when you approach him and you have a personal relationship, now you have to come out and begin to minister to the people. And when people who want to hear the word receive the word, the same thing will happen to them. But there are those who don't want the word, who really don't want to change. They really don't want to know Jesus Christ. And they are still rejecting him. Amen. For them. You have a veil over your face. Amen. For them. Your face is covered up. Because they are blind. Yes. And no matter how much you try to clarify. And try to, to, to minister to some people. They are just not going to get it. Amen. But we are obligated as the church. To go out into all the world. And preach the gospel. And make Jesus Christ known to the world. Some will be condemned. But those who will receive him. Will have everlasting life. Amen. And so we find that. In the world today. People are being quarantined. They are involved in social distancing. And all of this is so that. We can, we can guard ourselves. From coronavirus. Oh, yes, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with, with, with wearing the mask and being six feet apart, whatever we need to do. Because, see, in the world, we, we know that there is disease. This world is contaminated. We've got all kinds of things out there. And so it's nothing wrong with wearing the mask to cover your natural face and to, and to wash your hands and to be uh, at, a, at a place of, of learning how to make sure that you are keeping your personal hygiene, all of these things should be natural anyhow. Amen. But we want you to understand that as the church, we still have to minister to people. Amen. We, still have to, we still have to carry out the Great Commission. Amen. And so the reason why people are disturbed right now is because they are tired of being in the quarantine. They're tired of the stay-at-home rules. They're tired of, of, of being uh, uh, shut away from doing the things that they're so used to doing. Yes. They want to go to the games. They, they, they want to go to the parties. They want to go to the events. And they want to get out there and go to the restaurants and go to the, the many things that, that they've been doing all along. And people are getting tired of that. And sometimes people start rioting because we, we, you know, we, we, we got all this pandemic going on and, and it seems like it's getting worse every time people gather up at the beaches and gather up in different uh, types of gatherings and people are getting afraid. But why do they want to get out? We've been praying for revival. We've been praying that God would pour out his spirit and use this time as an opportunity to, to reach the lost and to help people to slow down and realize what's really important. And this is what we pray and we want to continue to pray that and we want to continue to operate in that. But understand, people are ready to get out to go right back to doing what they've always been doing. Yeah. They want things to return to normal. Some folks are calling it a new normal. But people just can't wait to return to normal. Not to return to God, but to return to what they call normal. 
want to get out and be social like we used to do want to get and gather up and be bunched up like we always have done in the past but I want to let you know that things are not going to be as they were coronavirus is going to be around a long time and we might as well just get used to the fact that this world is never going back to the way it used to be Amen. so as a church what do we do we gather together maybe a few at the time maybe that we are spread apart but then that's not just the church the church is supposed to be out among those in the world in the marketplace what we're doing in the buildings and in the gatherings is we're getting equipped so that we can go out and do what the Lord told us to do. Amen. But there are many who decide that, well, you know, this is a time that we don't, we, you know, they say that we're not supposed to gather together. So we don't go to church, even though the churches are opened up and people are starting to have church services and so forth. But uh, there are some people who will use it as an excuse and say, well, I don't want to go to church anyhow. And so I'm just staying out because they say that uh, we need to stay apart and we need to do that. And so, so they don't, so they not thinking about, okay, what, what did Jesus say? That's right. Jesus, on, Jesus, Jesus didn't say that we need to just always stay away from each other. There's a time and a place for what the Lord wants us to do. Amen. Come on now. We're going to go to the book of Matthew chapter 28 real quick. So you won't think that I'm trying to make up something. We're going to go to the scripture. How many of you believe that we're supposed to be obedient to the word of God? Amen. And I believe that God has given us an assignment. Not only as an individual church, but an assignment is given to the overall worldwide church. Matthew chapter number 28, verse number 18 through 20. And here, this is from the Lord. He says, and Jesus came and spoke unto them, his disciples saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore. Everybody say, go ye. Go ye. And who is the ye? Say, ye is me. Ye is me. Go me therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you when? Always. Always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. Now, Jesus gave a commission to his people. He said, go ye into where? All the world. Preach the gospel, baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, and teaching them to observe what? Everything that I have given to you to do. Well, when do we stop doing that? When do we stop doing it? Do, do, when the pandemic hits, we got to stop doing it because uh, they say that we need to quarantine, that we need to stay away from people. We need to watch our distances. Do we stop ministering? No. No. Be but... But Jesus said that we are supposed to do something. What does he want us to do? Go to Mark chapter 16. He said, preach the gospel. Go and baptize. He says, go and teach. But he didn't say when to stop doing it. <laughs> Mark chapter 16. Maybe, maybe you can find it in the scripture somewhere where he said there's a time to stop doing it. Is there time to stop doing it? He just said, go. Let's look at verse 15. Mark chapter 16 says, And he said, same Jesus, He said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. So that means that you're going to preach to people, everybody, is not going to receive, but some will. Mm -hmm. Then he said, those who believe not will be damned. Those who believe, he said, baptize them and they will be saved. Right. And in verse 17, 
These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Amen. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They shall lay what? Hands. They shall lay what? Hands. They shall lay what? Hands. On who? The, the who? The they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Well, now, last time I saw anybody lay hands on anybody, they were less than six feet apart. Uh, I know y'all quiet. Yeah. I, I just got to give you the way the Lord, because see, there's something that God wants the church to be doing these days. I believe God wants the church to come unmasked. In other words, don't hide. Don't, don't, don't stay hidden away. Don't stay in the, behind the scenes. We are supposed to be coming to the forefront. And even though we see the pandemic seems to be getting worse in some places and out of control in some places, that doesn't matter. When things get out of control in the earth, that's when God begins to touch his people so that we can move in the earth and do what he's called us to do. He says that he shall be with us how long? Until the what? Until the end. So if he's going to be with us until the end, are we at the end yet? No. So therefore he has not given us a deadline of how long we do this. We just keep doing it as long as we're here on the earth. Amen. But pastor, but pastor, if I lay hands on somebody, I'll be, I'll be breaking the rules. Pastor, if I lay hands on somebody, I might get what they got. Or uh, pastor, but, well, he, he didn't say he's not talking to you. He's not talking to you. Glory. Because he's not talking to the fearful, and he's not talking to the unbeliever. Amen. He said they that who? Believe. 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 So he's talking to those who believe. Yes. If you don't believe, don't you do it. Amen. Because, see, what he's saying here in, this, in this, these few verses, signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they will cast out devils. They will speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. He's not telling you to go out here and test God by picking up snakes. Yeah, there'll be a rattlesnake right here. And I want to demonstrate to you that if the snake bites me, it will not hurt me because the scripture said it. No, 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 no. He's not telling you to go out and act a fool. He's not telling you to go out and try, try to uh, put on a, a show for people. If the snake bites you, he most likely will kill you if you act like that. He's talking about if you know that you are in a ministry capacity, you have the assurance that Jesus is going to be with you and working with you and is saying that he will work with you with signs following. Yes. Amen. So when he tells you to do it, you can be in obedience to the Lord and do it in ministry capacity. Somebody might even be giving you poison to drink and you won't even know it. And, you, and, and they'll be waiting for you to swell up and die or something and nothing's happening to you. Why? Because supernaturally God is protecting you. So he's not telling you to just go out here and just start drinking poison and start handling snakes. And, and there have been people who were in snake handling churches. And I have seen uh, reports uh, uh, in the news where uh, uh, churches right here in Alabama had snake handling. And so some of the people came in there and they started daring folks to pick up rattlesnakes. And they would pick up snakes and dance around with them. And the snakes would bite people and many of them died because they were, <laughs> they didn't have faith, right? But they weren't doing it according to the scripture. They, 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 they weren't right with God in doing that because they were just doing things that they were told to do or just daring God, you know. Because that's not what he was talking about in this scripture passage. Amen. Once again, when you are in a ministry capacity, when you are operating by the spirit of the Lord and God tells you at, at, at that moment that you need to lay hands on the sick or do whatever he says to do, you're in a ministry capacity, do it. And when I say a ministry capacity, I'm not talking about with a title. I'm talking about the servants of God, the people of God. You don't have to have a title to operate in the spirit. If you've got the Holy Ghost, God has given you the ability to do exactly what he says in Mark chapter 16. Amen? Amen. But it's not as you are trying to do it. 
but it is as God is leading you to do it. It's one thing to be led by the Spirit of God, and it's another thing that you are doing things and saying that God is doing it. You better be led by the Spirit of God. And so he wants to teach you how to be led by his Spirit. And so when you are led by the Spirit of God, you have no reason to fear any disease. You don't have any reason to fear any demon. You don't have any reason to fear anything that's coming upon this world. Why? Because now you are operating by the power of God and he promises to protect you and be with you every step of the way. Amen. Are you here today? Amen. 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 We see even in the ministry of Jesus, him demonstrating how that you don't have to be afraid right. of whatever is on this earth. Mark chapter 6 and verse 5, it talks about how that he would go into his own hometown and he couldn't do many miracles there because of the people's unbelief. So even Jesus himself could not operate when there was unbelief there. Yeah. So when you are in unbelief, you, you know, you don't have the promise that he's going to help you. Amen. But Jesus himself only laid hands on a few sick folk and they, they were healed in his own hometown. Then we find over in Luke chapter 4, around verse 40, that it says that in this case, everyone that came to Jesus to be healed, it says that he what? Laid hands on them and all of them were healed. So it is his, it is his intention, it is his ministry, it is the work of God to heal people. Amen. It's not that he wants to just go around just making folks sick. But he does heal. He said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Yes. He is Jehovah Rapha. Mm -hmm. his, his, his work is to heal. Amen. But it does take believing. Amen. And he can heal through us. In Luke chapter 17. I want you to go there. Luke chapter 17 verse 12. And see what it says there. I tell you what, I'll just tell you because this is kind of long, but in Luke chapter 17, this is where 10 lepers came out from their leper colony up to a point to where they could see Jesus. And apparently they had heard of Christ. And so what is a leper colony? This is where they were quarantined. All of them, you could say today, they had, let's just say they got coronavirus or they got some kind of disease or something that's incurable, yeah. AIDS yeah. or whatever it may be. Yeah. Come on now. And so they were what? Social distancing. Amen. To the point of where they had to call out to Jesus from a distance. Yeah. Yeah. And many of the people when they were in leper colonies, they would have to scream out to those who came near them and they would say, unclean, unclean, we have leprosy. And people would turn and go the other way because they had to keep, what, social distancing. Amen. <laughs> Come on now. It's in the Bible. Yeah. They had to stay away from people with certain diseases because it was contagious. So when they saw Jesus, Jesus saw them from a distance. Yeah. And in this case, he didn't have to go and lay hands on anybody. He just spoke the word. Yes. And he said, go and show yourself to the priest. Like it says in the law of Moses. Yes. And as they went, those ten lepers, on their way to show themselves to the priest, it says that all of them were cleansed. Yes. But only one of them noticed that he was healed. And when he saw that he was healed, he turned around and went back and thanked Jesus. Now, what was he doing? He did just what Jesus said. Go show yourself to the priest. Amen. Jesus being our great high priest, yes. this man recognizing who Jesus is, he goes and he oh, shows himself, I am completely oh. healed by your word, yes. and I am showing you my, my, my skin, and everything has come back to normal. I just want to thank you. How many of you Amen. realize Amen. that that's all the Lord is looking for us? It's whenever he blesses us, whenever he touches us, whenever he changes Amen. something in our lives, we ought to give him thanks. He Amen. wants to be appreciated for who he is. Amen. Somebody ought to say something right Amen. there. Amen. There is a scripture I do want you to turn to in this Matthew chapter 8. 
Matthew chapter 8. We're only going to look at verse 1 through 4. Matthew chapter 8, verse 1 through 4. And when you have that, I want you to just say amen or I got it. Amen. All right. Matthew chapter 8, verse number 1 down to verse number 4. All right. Are you getting something from this? Amen. Glory to God. Understand God has given us an assignment in the earth. He wants us to use the power of God and not be afraid because we are the church, not the church as usual, but the church unusual. And he doesn't want us to be afraid to use the gifts and the abilities he's put in us. Just be led by him. And when we are led by him, we don't have to worry. He is going to bring himself the results, the desired results that he wants. So now we're going to look at Matthew chapter 8, beginning at verse number 1. We go down to verse number 4. And it says, When he was come down from the mountain... Great multitudes followed him, and behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. Yes, yes. This leper was different from those other ones. Yes. They were in, the other ones were in leper colonies. This guy comes to Jesus, yes. and he said, if you will, make me clean. And Jesus put forth his what? put forth his what? Amen. Hand. Jesus didn't run around and say, oh, let me find my mask. Or let me get my gloves. No, he said he put forth his hand and did what? Uh -huh. Touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said unto him, see thou tell no man, but go thy way. Show thyself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Did the same thing. He told him to go show himself to the priest. Why? Because this was still under the law. Amen. But nevertheless, Jesus showed that he is beyond the law. Amen. He's not, he's not trying to, uh, to, to say that he, he's not operating under law, but he is a fulfillment of the law. Amen. And he is showing you what it is that God really wants. He is the very heart of the law itself. Yes. And so... In the law, it lets us know that God does want us to be healed. God wants us to be blessed. God wants us to have the best. And what did he do? The leper came to Jesus. And Jesus had no fear of catching leprosy. Jesus had no fear of the disease coming upon him. He didn't even tell his disciples, y'all better scatter. Here comes a leper. None of that. It says that Jesus put his hands on this diseased man because he knew that the power that was in him was greater than that what was out there. Everybody say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. If God brings somebody to you and they may be sick and they may be diseased and they are looking for God to do something in their life, don't you be afraid. If God says lay hands on them, you don't have to, you don't have to get to the point where I'm like, oh, I got to go find my gloves. Or oh, you can't come to me. No, understand. He wants you to operate in a ministry capacity. Sometimes there will be those who will come around you. And they'll need your assistance. They'll need your help. They don't need to see cowardly Christians. Amen. They don't need to see you uh, at, at a point where you're trying to get away from them. There are people who need you. Yes, Lord. They need you because God is in you. And they see that God is in you. Church don't need to be running. This is time for the church to come out. Amen. Now, I'm not telling you not to put your mask on when you go out into public places or even come to church. You can wear your mask. Nobody's going to condemn you for that. Nobody's condemning you for uh, not wearing it or wearing it. But when it comes down to, you know, you, you're going out in different places and uh, you may be doing something other than just just for ministry. You can put your mask on. You can put your gloves on. Protect yourself. I'm not telling you not to do that. But understand what I'm saying is there are times God wants you to work in ministry capacity and Amen. you don't need to be fearful Amen. of what's out there Amen. because you are the church. Amen. And he says that upon this rock, I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. You don't have to worry about what the devil might try to do to you. Don't let fear stop you. Don't let unbelief 
minister to you more than believe. You've got to get in the word of God so that you can build up your belief system. Get in the word of God and read it for yourself. Amen. Let God speak to you so that you can get stronger and stronger in faith. Why? Because as we go through life, difficult days are coming. We haven't seen anything yet. Don't think everything is just about to get hunky-dory, whatever that means, and everything's going to be oh, just so wonderful. Oh, it's, uh, it, it's over now. The pandemic is over now. And la-di-da, we can go right back to doing what we used to do. Seeing all we want to sin, forget about God. No. It's time for you to step up because the world is about to show you that it's a mess out there. And they're depending on science to get them through. They're depending on the election changing things. Oh, we're going to elect the right person in the office now. Oh, we're going to do that. I'm telling you. God has already told us in his word that things are about to get worse in the world. The world is getting darker. The church is getting brighter. And he's ready for you to manifest as the sons of God. Don't be fearful. He says you can lay hands on the sick. And they will recover. Why? Because Jesus himself is with you. You can cast out devils. Amen. You can speak with new tongues. Yes. Yes. You can Amen. baptize. You can teach. Go into all the world and affect somebody. Don't be complacent. Like so many who have used this as an excuse to leave church. Yes. Say, well, we can't, we can't gather now. We can't have no social gatherings. I just, I just watch the internet. I just watch TV. I just... I just do all of these things. Now, I know everybody that hadn't come back to church is not that way. I, I don't know. But I know there are many people out there who are scared to go to church because they don't want to gather. Yeah. But see, we are protected. Whether you wear a mask or not, God is with you. Amen. And you've got to believe it. Amen. Believing is one thing. If you don't believe... You know, do everything you can, be, be protected, whatever. If, you, you put, if your confidence is more in what the world says than what God says, then, you know, wherever your confidence is, you know, you do that. But you'll find that God, God keeps his word. Amen. God keeps his promise. Yes, he does. And God is almighty. Uh, Why would you want to be on anybody else's side yeah. than God almighty? So. Draw back to Jesus. Draw to Jesus. If you've never made him Lord of your life, if he's not your savior, this is the day of salvation. And now is the appointed time. You don't have to be afraid of anything. Just come to know the Lord. And how do you do that? Well, if you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ has come and that he's died on the cross of Calvary and that he rose again on the third day, with all power in his hands. Yes. And he has sent his spirit into the earth that you can receive his spirit where you are. Yes, Lord. And if you believe, you can receive his spirit right now yes. Yes. and be born again and be a brand new creature in Christ. And you'll have the guarantee that you will have everlasting life. Yes, Lord. Won't you pray with me now? Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, whoever's watching and listening, my prayer is that you will touch them. Wherever they are, Lord God, let them be drawn into the kingdom of God. Let them be drawn by you. Let them hear your voice right now and not harden their heart. But Lord, somebody who's watching this today needs to know you. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you're touching and drawing someone into the kingdom of God. That their life will never be the same again. Break every addiction break every yoke, break every bondage from them now and save them in Jesus' name. And if you believe that you are received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you need to live that life and find a church you can go to. There are many that are opening up and you can find a place where you can be ministered to and also get involved in a ministry because you don't want to just be sitting down. You want to get up and be what God is calling you to do. 
So be what God is calling you to do. Hope you can visit with us here at Miracle Deliverance Temple of Christ. We have two locations in Montgomery, Alabama. The location address is on the screen. Phone number is on the screen. Get in touch with us and help us to minister to you, whatever your need may be. And we believe that you would be one that we would see in heaven and we would glorify God because you made it in because of what God is doing through us. Love you in Jesus' name. Join us again next time today. I'll be living.